Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Reserved Investments. So I'm going to read you two different statements, and I want you to tell me what do you think the healthy statement is? What do you think a sophisticated investor operating in these markets would say versus that of a Timmy? So here are the two statements you have to choose from. Tell me which one is said by the sophisticated investor. I have this collection as a result of my wealth. The second statement, I have wealth because of this collection. Now, let me give you the answer. The smart, sophisticated investor would say, I have this collection as a result of my wealth. Do you see the difference in mindset? A Timmy, somebody who is speculating in these markets that's going all in, would instead tell you, I have wealth because of this collection. This is why I get into so many arguments with Pokemon collectors or video game collectors or comic book collectors. It doesn't matter what the collectible class is. If you're putting all your money in that one asset class, you have no other diversified interests. You don't have a financial portfolio. You're not investing in real estate. You have nothing else going on. I'm sorry to tell you, you are set up for failure. Markets that center around alternate asset classes work best when they are operated upon with the mindset of diversification rather than going all in. And this is something that a lot of people get wrong. A lot of people out there put all their money in cryptocurrency or gold, silver. It's called alternate asset investing for a reason. If it's an alternate asset class, that means by definition, it's not and should not be the main course. And that's really what I try to teach on this channel. Markets in the antiques and collectibles trade specifically are inherently risky. If a market takes a downturn, there is no guarantee it's going to come back up in value. The same thing is true with precious metals. The same thing can be said in cryptocurrencies and possibly Bitcoin. Now, when we look at financial assets, if you're holding index funds, if you're holding a basket of well-diversified exchange traded funds, in most cases, if there's a problem in the overall financial market, if we look back 2008, 2009, during the financial crisis, those assets dropped in value. They came right back as the economy recovered. You know, there's an excellent, excellent quote out there that says, if you invest in an S&P 500 index fund and you hold it for 10, 20 years, there is a 98% chance you're going to make money. Now, on the flip side, we know this just by looking at the statistics. Are you aware 70 to 80% of all cryptocurrency traders lost money in the last five years? 70 to 80% versus 98% of all people that made money just buying and holding a simple S&P 500 index fund for 10 to 20 years. This is why I caution you guys about these markets. Now, if this wasn't bad enough, I've been on YouTube now for roughly five years. And I have seen a plethora of content, not just geared towards the antiques and collectibles trade, but also just toxic content geared towards financial investing in general. And unfortunately, according to the YouTube demographics that YouTube provides me being a content creator, a lot of you that watch this channel, you also watch some of these other channels. Now, I'm not here to attack any one content creator. Advice, even the best advice, if a person receiving that advice does not understand it and does not know how to act on it, it can be seen as toxic advice. But what I do want to do is I want to talk about having realistic financial expectations, what you can realistically achieve in your lifetime. Because if you listen to the Pokemon Timmies, if you listen to the great at video game Poindexters, if you listen to all these individuals that are going all in on all these alternate asset classes, all of them throw around terms like millionaire or billionaire, heaven forbid. So what we need to do is we need to level set. We need to define actually what a millionaire is and what a millionaire isn't. And I got to give you some statistics and facts about how many millionaires actually reside in the United States. I also want to give you some statistics 
about the demographics that make up this exclusive group of individuals. Because what I'm hoping this video is going to do, it's going to level set. It's going to get us all back to basics. Because I'm so sick of people who, I hate to say this, who grew up economically challenged, who never went to college, coming into my comment section, telling me that they're going to be a multimillionaire simply because they discovered cryptocurrency or heaven forbid, Pokemon cards, or even worse, penny stock investing. It doesn't work that way, guys. So what I want to do first here, I want to define the true definition of what being a millionaire actually is. All is what being a millionaire means. It is a simple equation of net worth. It is if you take a person's assets, you add them all up, you subtract their debts and liabilities from that number. If the number remaining, assuming it is positive, because you can have a negative net worth, especially in today's day and age, if that number remaining is positive and it is a million dollars or more, congratulations, that person meets the statistical definition of being a millionaire. It has nothing to do with the amount of income they make. It has nothing to do even with the amount of money in their checking account. You can have $10 in a checking account. If you have a million dollars in assets and no debts, guess what? You're technically a millionaire. I'm sorry to tell you, but if you reach the coveted millionaire status, balloons do not fall from the ceiling. A chick that looks like Kelly Kapowski, if you get the reference, Saved by the Bell, 1990s, for those of you that weren't alive, does not fall from the ceiling and break out into a dance to congratulate you that you're now part of the millionaire club. Most people who become millionaires at the lower level, they live very normal lives. Very few people even know that they are millionaires. You wanna know why? Wealth is usually not seen. Wealth is usually not loud. Now, if you're an idiot like me and you come to YouTube and you broadcast some of it, yeah, people might suspect that you have money. People might suspect you're somewhere either close to becoming a millionaire or already are. But to the average person that drives a Honda or a Toyota and just happens to have a million dollars in assets, I'm sorry. The lifestyle that is portrayed by the media, the lifestyle that is portrayed in YouTube, in TikTok, in Instagram feeds, on Facebook is not realistic. Now, if you have a net worth of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollars or more, then yeah, that means that you can do whatever the hell you want. But I really hate to break it to you. Most millionaires actually work boring corporate jobs. As a matter of fact, I'm going to challenge you right now. Are you aware if you work in corporate America and you make between 60 to $90,000 a year, which is about average. If, if you're working in corporate America and you're at mid-level, that's about average. So you're sending emails back and forth. You're interacting with people at your level, above you, below you. Are you aware on a daily basis? You are routinely interacting with people that you probably would never expect that have net worths of a million dollars or more. And they're coming to work every single day, probably pissed off about things that are going on in their personal lives, in their financial lives, and even at their corporate jobs. Yet they're still grinning and bearing it. Because with a million dollar net worth, you cannot afford to retire, guys, for the most part. So that's why we're having this conversation. So now, just what I told you about being a millionaire, that it's really not this flashy thing that TikTokers and YouTubers make it out to be. And you're probably not going to be able to afford to retire on just a million dollars. Let's dive into the numbers even more. Because are you aware there are roughly 333 million people that live in the United States. Of that 333 million people, 8.5% of them meet the definition of being a millionaire. That means out of 333 million people, only 21 million people are millionaires. Now that may seem like a high number, but again, that's only 8.5% of the population. Now here's another statistic that YouTube tends to leave out when they tell you that you can easily become a millionaire because everybody listens to Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, heaven forbid, Robert Kiyosaki, and thinks if they take their advice, they're going to become wealthy. Well, are you aware? 
Most millionaires do not listen to financial social media influencers. As a matter of fact, the poorer you are, the more likely you are to take advice from Grant Cardone, Gary V, and Robert Kiyosaki. They've done studies that prove this. And the poorer you are, usually, I hate to say this, the more less financially intelligent you are. Now, I'm not doing this video to humiliate anybody. I'm actually doing it for quite the opposite. Because I want you to understand that of that 8.5% of the population who has met the definition of being a millionaire, are you aware the average age of a millionaire in the United States is between 61 and 62 years of age? So those of you that come in my comment section and you show a profile picture of you standing in front of a Porsche and you're 28 years of age and you tell me that you made all this money trading cryptocurrency, um, I really hate to tell you, statistically, it doesn't add up because if you're under the age of 30 and you're a millionaire, out of the 8.5% of individuals that can claim millionaire status, are you aware only 1% of them are under the age of 30? So what are the chances that I can put out a video and I have three people that tell me that they live in the United States and they're under the age of 30 and they're multimillionaires? That seems interesting, doesn't it? What I'm getting at is a lot of these social media influencers, the people on TikTok, the people on YouTube, the people on Facebook, the people on Instagram that look like they're having the time of their lives, that are standing in front of a Porsche or a Ferrari at the age of 32, that are trying to convince you that they can get any girl, that they have this whole collection of Rolexes, that they wear Armani suits, they live in a $2 million house. Are you aware they're full of shit? It doesn't statistically add up, guys. I've been involved in finance for very many years, both professionally and, of course, now unprofessionally because I'm not licensed in that field anymore. I'm a YouTuber that's filming a video one o'clock in the morning to try to wake the world up and tell them that they're being bamboozled watching all of these stupid content creators that are showcasing their livelihoods to them, where in most cases... The reason why they have these livelihoods is because they have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers on the internet that believe the shit they sell. I'm here to tell you, in most cases, you are not as financially behind in life as you think. And I want to make that very clear. Now, to be fair, I know I'm going to get criticism for this video because I know a lot of you guys are watching this going, well, Sean... You have paid up real estate. You have more than one house. You have hundreds of thousands of dollars in investment accounts. We've seen coins, currency, comic books, toys on your channel that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars if you add it all up just in those collectibles alone. So I get I'm going to get criticized, but I want to make sure that you guys are aware you're really not in the minority if you feel left behind in life. I want to make that very clear. As a matter of fact, you're in the majority. Let's take this further. Are you aware of the 8.5% of the population that identifies as being a millionaire? Only 15% are between the ages of 40 and 50. This means those of you that reach out to me and you tell me, Sean, I'm not good enough. I don't feel like I've accomplished anything. I can't do this. I can't get married. I can't go back to school. It's too late for me. I'm here to tell you, it is not too late. You're probably further ahead than most other people. You just don't realize it because you keep watching stupid TikTok videos or YouTubers or go on Instagram feeds with people that are showing you a fake lifestyle. I've said this before. Are you aware? I don't have an Instagram account. I'm no longer on Twitter. Even on Facebook, I keep a very low profile. I have roughly, I think, 108, 109 friends. And I can honestly tell you this, out of the 108, 109 friends I have, I think three of them are dead. I'm dead seriously. They died and they just, the, the Facebook account just exists in memorandum of those individuals. So I'm here to tell you, most people that are coming on the internet, showing you their fancy houses, their valuable collections, their fleet of supercars, their collection of Rolex watches, wearing an Armani suit with girls around their arms. Most of it is fake, guys. 
You're falling for fake bullshit. And most of these individuals are now earning money based on the YouTube algorithm because you guys keep watching this fake bullshit, thinking that it's real, and then thinking that you yourselves do not measure up. So let's go a little bit further here. Now, this is the bad news, and you guys are going to hate me for being honest here. But out of all millionaires, out of the 8.5% of all people that identify as being a millionaire, I'm sorry to tell you, 80 to 85% have a bachelor's degree or higher. That's their education status. The chances of you becoming a millionaire without a college education, it is possible, but it is slim to none. Because again, most of the people that have gone to college, I hate to say this, they learn critical thought. They have to take some level of courses geared towards economics, finance, business, even if you're going to become a lawyer, a doctor, an accountant especially. But most fields require some level of business aptitude. So that's why you're more likely to become a millionaire if you're college educated. Now, let me give you another statistic that's going to upset you even more. And even this is one where I don't even meet the requirements. If you're married, you're more likely to become a millionaire earlier on simply because you have two incomes. So if you marry somebody that is like-minded, shares your values and your beliefs, and is also professionally driven, you're obviously more likely to become a millionaire. Now, again, I know I'm going to get criticism with this video. Well, Sean, where did you get your money? Again, I got very lucky early on with the advent of eBay, flipping antiques and collectibles into the market, taking those funds and investing wisely. And I'm going to be very honest. The earlier years of my life were very rough. The years where I was learning the antiques and collectibles trade were very rough. I made a lot of mistakes. I trusted the wrong people. I went into bad partnerships. I went into bad relationships. I didn't sort myself out until I was like 38 or 39. And I'm recording this video. I'm roughly 47 years of age. I'm going to be 48 in another two months. Right around Christmas, I'll turn 48. So I really didn't get my act together until I was like 38 or 39 years of age. I want to make that very clear. I was diagnosed with celiac disease at the age of 34. Most people are not diagnosed that late. I had atypical celiac disease, meaning it didn't present like it does in normal people. So it took them years to get a diagnosis and I was suffering very badly. So I want you guys to know, whatever you think you're facing, whatever hardship you're going against, if you literally learn finance and you put together a well-diversified portfolio, you too can become a millionaire. You just have to grind it and have reasonable expectations of what being a millionaire is. Again, just because you have a net worth of a million dollars does not mean you're always drinking champagne, balloons fall from the ceiling, and hot chicks are calling you up. At a million dollar net worth, unless you tell people, most people aren't going to even know what you have. It's just like I've said this in other videos. I invest in antiques and collectibles. Are you aware those antiques and collectibles are off the radar? They are non-cash producing assets. This is why a lot of women that I previously dated are mad at me. They didn't know that I had six figures in coins, currency, and comic books stashed away. Like I really was supposed to tell them that? It's ridiculous. It's sitting in a safety deposit box. It doesn't even pay me any dividend or any interest. It just sits there. This is what you got to understand if you're going to invest in alternate asset classes. The investments that pay me a dividend or an interest payment are related to underlying cash flows. This is why I tell you guys, if you're going to attempt to become wealthy, you need to start with traditional financial assets and expand from there. A lot of you guys that come to the internet, you don't want to hear that. You think there's some type of Konami code to life where if you push up, up, down, down, left, right, whatever the combination is, you think you're going to unlock the secret to making a lot of money. There is no secret. It's coming to work every day, having the mindset where you got to grind it and you break off a little bit of that money and you invest it for the long term. And over the long term, you will see that that money grows and you can become a millionaire. Again, 
The average age of a millionaire in the United States is between 61 and 62 years of age. Only 8.5% of the population achieves millionaire status. And are you aware the vast majority of all millionaires are over the age of 65? So you guys that are watching all of this stupid, toxic financial content on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram or Facebook are wasting your time. Yes, there are exceptions out there. Make no mistake, we all know famous actors, famous actresses, models, musicians, athletes. There are people that have a tremendous amount of skill where they're just born lucky. And somebody discovers them and they end up signing a lucrative deal where they get paid $10 million per movie. Or they get paid $4 million a year to throw a football around for a couple of months. That is not the norm. The chances of you forming a multi-million dollar company, let alone a billion dollar company, are slim to none. I've said this before in other videos. When we look at Bill Gates, Bill Gates was driving a Porsche long before he formed Microsoft. He came from a very wealthy, connected family. When we look at Mark Zuckerberg, Mark Zuckerberg's father offered him a fully paid Harvard education or a McDonald's franchise. Case in point, a McDonald's franchise is not cheap. You have to have millions of dollars to be able to buy that and give it to your son. These people were born with silver spoons in their mouth, all the way up their ass, coming out their mouth in most cases. You need to realize that is not the norm. Extremely wealthy people have connections. They can make things happen. In most cases, you are probably not that lucky. You have to get back to basics. You got to learn how to build a well-diversified financial portfolio as young as possible and hold it through thick and thin and keep contributing to it. That's how you build wealth. Please stop watching all these stupid social media influencers that say stupid things and get a lot of feedback, get a lot of clicks. All you're doing is making those individuals rich at your own expense. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below.